joined here by Philippe Chalez, energy specialist for the Sapiens Institute. Hello. Belgian born, so you've, you, you yes. know both sides of the border on this issue. I know. Let me, let's begin with what we, we just heard there. Uh, can those wind turbines be built a little bit further out to sea? I think that uh, it could be uh, it could be a problem, but uh, I'm afraid about the numbers. Uh, remember that last year at the North Sea uh, summit, they spoke about 150 gigawatts for 2050. Now they speak one year later about 300. Yeah. 300 gigawatts of uh, wind turbine. Well, it's easy to make promises for 2050. Let's talk about the first promise they made, which is for the year 2030. Right now, 2030, it's an estimated... 2030, they speak about 120. They're talking about 120 gigawatts of power compared to the current 25. So already, that's a tall order. That's, that's a lot. Uh, you have to know that 120 uh, gigawatts of, uh, of wind turbine, it means approximately... Uh, if you take uh, 10 megawatts per, uh, per turbine, it means approximately uh, uh, 12,000 12, turbines in North Sea. Uh, you have to know that uh, FECAN, which is currently built offshore France, starting built offshore France, uh, is half a, of a gigawatt. So it means that 100... It's a project off the coast of Normandy. It's a project, yeah, in France. So it means that uh, 120 gigawatt in 2030, it means that you have to build 240 equivalent to FECAN. So I think that, again, it's uh, what I consider as an inverse agenda. It means that uh, politicians say numbers, but uh, it will not be satisfied. Impossible for me. Uh, there is uh, the call by the industry. The? Uh, the, in the industry saying we need help from, from, from your EU states because if we're going to ramp up production, admitting they can, they right now they say they're going to need spare parts from the places like China. Is there a way for EU nations to have their own uh, equivalent of the Inflation Reduction Act when it comes to wind turbines? Uh, alors, first of all, there is the problem of manufacturing, which doesn't exist at at this scale today in uh, today in Europe. The second problem is the. Uh, providing the metals, because in fact you have to know that uh, one turbine of uh, uh, offshore wind is approximately 2,500 tons of iron. So it means that uh, will uh, the European uh, Union able to provide all this iron? I don't think so. And then you need a lot of copper, because uh, you need a lot of copper to join the the turbine uh, together and then to bring uh, the electric current to the coast. Copper because is essential. They're saying that uh, next year in 2024, there's going to be a copper shortage globally. So at this point, what's the EU strategy? What should they do? Uh, what should they do? They should uh, work very closely with uh, Chile because uh, Chile is uh, the first provider, world provider in, uh, in copper, represent 40% uh, of the world production of copper. There is also a lot of copper in Republic Democratic du Congo, uh, which uh, is uh, under today the power of China, uh, not Chile, of course. Uh, but so I think that uh, we have a lot of dependence uh, everywhere. We have also dependence on what is called uh, uh, very special and uh, specific rare metals, which are used in the uh, in the summit of the, of the turbine, and all these metal come from China. Uh, so I think that uh, building uh, an own manufacturing, uh, uh, European manufacturing of a wind turbine is uh, is not realistic, especially in a so short uh, so short time. Imagine uh, 2030; it's uh, it's less than seven years. But the argument, and we've heard this argument from places like the International Energy Agency, is that if you start to build things to scale. It can happen. It can happen. Uh, if you look at the past uh, and you look uh, the time required to implement even of onshore wind, uh, I think that everything is possible, but I don't believe in a so short time. And uh, all the forecast from the uh, uh, Energy Agency is... Uh, 
are not are not uh, are not realistic uh, are not realistic at all. They they plan to make a total decarbonation of the world at the horizon of 2050. Uh, required uh, too much turbine, too much uh, solar panel, and so on. I don't think it's really realistic. Uh, it's communication, nothing all. Just communication, because I, we've seen people said, "Oh, Europe uh, will have." Uh, power outages this winter. That didn't happen when they had to wean themselves off of Russian gas. Now the 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 urgency is here. We can uh, we're, we're feeling it in Europe. Yeah. You don't believe that? Uh, I believe that there is an urgency to provide electricity because we will need a lot of electricity. But uh, you have to be aware that uh, even without the Russian gas, we will rely a lot on gas, other source of gas, but. Uh, we will eat coal, gas, or nuclear. Nuclear, forget it, because uh, even if we start... Coal, to gas, nuclear, you're not putting renewables in the... No, uh, to complement renewables. Ah, to complement renewables. Sorry, yeah. to complement yeah. renewables, you need absolutely uh, uh, some uh, other source because the renewable cannot satisfy by itself. You have nuclear, you have coal, or you have gas. Nuclear, it's too late to have enough... In a few years, uh, it's, uh, the, the, the new uh, plan will be uh, available in 2000 and uh, let's say 2040. Uh, coal, we don't want coal, so uh, there is no no other source than gas to help renewable. And is, here, is it still? Is it still? Because uh, you heard Dave Keating bringing up the uh, the the point at that summit. You have. Olaf Scholz, anti-nuclear, standing next to Emmanuel Macron, pro-nuclear. Yeah. Should there be EU consensus when it comes to energy policy, or should each nation go its own? I would pray for that because uh, I prefer think consensus. I prefer consensus because, of course, a united uh, energy transition in Europe would be much more hap much more uh, efficient, uh, much cheaper than uh, different nationalist uh, politics. But you can see today that uh, it's not possible. So uh, I am a little bit worried about, about all that. And uh, I don't think that such summit uh, will bring uh, something very, very positive. And again, uh, I think it's more communication than, any, than anything else. All right, we'll see you in 2030. Philippe so Charles. let's see in 2030. Many thanks. Absolutely. Many thanks for being with us.